From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Paul Kendrick, Johnny. Over at Eastern Allied Casualty, remember? Oh, sure, Paul. How are you? Seen any good fights lately? Prize fights, that is? Yeah, the championship bout at the stadium over in Mulville last week. Were you there? No, I had to miss it. But it didn't miss me. Huh? The minute Georgie hit the canvas in that fourth round, it cost me 50 bucks. Johnny, do you remember Al Coronado? Are you kidding? I've watched that boy come up from the Golden Gloves. Well, he fought in one of the preliminary bouts. I know. I lost on him, too. 20 bucks. Come on over, will you? And I'll tell you why the company may lose 50,000 on him. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Eastern Allied Casualty Insurance Company, 422 Spidal Building, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the squared circle matter. Expense account item one, a dollar ten cents, cab from my apartment to the offices of Eastern Allied. When I got upstairs into his personal cubicle, I found Paul Kendrick pacing the floor. Sit down, Johnny. Uh, have a drink if you want one. No, no thanks. Hey, looks like you're the one who could use a drink. What are you worried about? Don't tell me you've been hitting the company till for big money to bet on the fights. Johnny, I'm worried about murder. Listen. I'm all ears. How long since you've seen Al Coronado fight? Oh, six months, a year, maybe. But before that, when he was working all the local arenas, you and I were present every time he put on the gloves. So? We knew him when he had reflexes quick enough to... Well, do you remember how he'd show off by picking a fly or mosquito out of the air, grabbing it between his fingers without even hurting it? Yeah, Sure. He was no metal giant, not by a long shot, but he had the fastest eyes and hands I ever saw in a man. Right. But something has happened to him, something very wrong, and I think I know what it is. Listen. I'm listening. A few years ago, his manager, Ricky Malone, took out a $50,000 policy on him, annuity. So what? A lot of managers take out policies on their boys. And then get them killed? Look, Al is fighting again tomorrow night in a small town outside of Joplin. Joplin? Missouri? A little place just across the state line. Johnny, I want you to be there. You mean as a sort of bodyguard? I want you to see the fight, that's all. See Al Coronado fight. Yeah, but this murder correct. I'm having a copy of the policy made, and you can pick it up at the Joplin Post Office. General delivery. Now, Paul... I know, I know. I may be all wrong. This may only be a hunch without a single legitimate reason for suspicion. That's why I took a whole week to think it over before calling him. That's why I want somebody who knows Al as well as you and I do to... Look, will you go down there and see him? Well, I... We'll pay the freight. Pad your expense account, anything you like. Oh, now that's an attractive But do it, Johnny. Will you? Item two, another dollar ten, back to my apartment to pack. Item three, one hundred twenty-four dollars even. Plane fare and incidentals to Joplin. By your leave, Paul, the incidentals included a new sports shirt, loud enough to startle the whole state of Arizona, an extra pack of razor blades, and a new toothbrush. Also, item four, three bucks, flowers for the stewardess, who managed to find me an extra bottle of champagne. I arrived at Joplin shortly before noon, and after checking into a hotel, found that by some miracle, a copy of Al's policy was waiting for me at the post office. A quick glance at it brings up item five, four dollars and a quarter, phone call. What do you mean, holding out on you? I thought you said Ricky Malone took out the policy. He did, and pays all the premiums. But the beneficiary named is Frankie Fortina. Now, who's he? I don't know yet. Well, his address is in New York City. You better look him up, will you? I've been trying to. But the last time Fortina was at the address on the policy, it was a racetrack bookie joint. Oh, so that's why you're worried. That's one reason. Well, if you learn anything about him, let me know, will you? I'm staying at the Beverly Arms. Okay, Johnny. Johnny. Yeah? Call me again, will you? After the fight tonight? Sure. I was tired, so I had a big lunch. That's item six. Went up to my room and slept. I overslept. It was nearly nine o'clock when I woke up, so I grabbed a cab. That's item seven. and went out to the arena in the nearby town of Mount Elba. For five bucks I made, I managed to get a seat at ringside in time to catch the end of the last preliminary. 
in one minute, ten the program told me Al was scheduled for the main event Rito against Rito some Rito local Rito boy Rito named Rafe Rito Cummings. I never heard of him, and I doubt if anybody outside of Tucson ever had. I understood why when he stepped into the ring. This kid looked like the rankest kind of amateur. Strong, sure, and in good condition, but clumsy. He almost tripped over his own size 15 feet. And it was no act to fool an opponent either. Al, when he came in, looked as good as ever. He gave me a quick glance of recognition, though I'm sure he knew nothing about me except possibly my name. At the opening bell, he came out fast. All the old speed and timing were there. Faint weave and flick out that light, but punishing left. Same old pattern, same old... Wait a minute. Those quick left jabs were only landing about one and four. As though he touched Cummings only when the clumsy ox happened to walk into him. But because of his speed, Al took nothing but a few light ones on the body. He kept his face well out of reach. Oh, yeah, his timing was perfect, but his aim was terrible. Every time he shot out his fist, he was three, four inches wide. Then a funny thing happened. At the end of the round, when Al went back to his corner, and remember, Rafe had only tapped him a few times on the body. When he went back to his corner and started to sit down, he almost missed the stool. Would have if one of the seconds had named it under him. Funny. The second round got underway the same as the first. Al was all speed, dodging, weaving, keeping his face out of the way. But again, he wasn't hitting his mark. And then it happened. He missed Cummings wide, then practically ran into his glove, catching it hard in the cheek, and down he went. Why, there wasn't enough steam behind Cummings' glove to hurt it. But Al took the count. He'd been hurt by that tap on the face. Then another thing. The second he was counted out, his handlers practically hauled him out of the ring and back to his dressing room. And believe me, Al looked terrible. His eyes had a strange, almost faraway look. As though that little smack had knocked his brains loose. Had... My seat was on the far side of the ring, but I elbowed my way through the crowd and back to the row of dressing rooms in a hallway built on one end of the building. Al! Al Coronado! I told you on the way up the aisle, Doc, huh? we don't need you. The boy's all right. Go on, Doc. Beat it. You hear me, Doc? Listen! This is Johnny Dollar. Huh? Old fan of Al's from Hartford. I want to see him. Some other time. No, no, right away. Come on, open up. I said some other time. Don't you understand? We're pulling out of this, Berg, and we ain't got time to stand around and talk. Now, look, buddy. Malone's the name. I'm Al's manager, see? And when I say get out, I mean vamoose. Al, mean the... are you okay, boy? This is Johnny Dollar. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, brother, that's what you're wrong. Hey, Al. Al, good Lord, Al, what's the matter with you? Oh, uh, hello, hello, Johnny. Hey, Al, look at me. No, no, I mean straight at me. Here, Al. I'm, I'm all right, Johnny. You're in bad shape. You should never have fought tonight. Oh, that, that's all right. Where are your seconds, your trainer? Uh, Ricky, he don't, don't let nobody in after fight. Look, Al, can you get up off that table, stand up and walk? Oh, sure, sure, Johnny. Then come on, I'm taking you out of here to no, a doctor. No, Johnny. Easy, Al. Don't, look, look behind Al, you, Rick. Please, he's up, on. he's got it. You bet I am, Dollar. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Each Monday through Friday evening, most of these same stations bring you the Amos and Andy Music Hall, variety entertainment at its best, for top songs, informal visits with top stars, and for a never-ending supply of fun. Turn your home into the Amos and Andy Music Hall five nights a week. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the squared circle matter. <laughs> came to, the dressing room was dark and quiet. After carefully falling off the table where they'd left me, I groped my way to the light switch, stumbling incidentally over the remains of the chair Ricky Malone had used on me. It was well after midnight, so I left by the dressing room window. The second I reached my hotel room, I put through a long-distance call, hoping Paul Kendrick would be in home, in bed. He was. Yeah, hello. Johnny Dollar. And Paul, you're right. It'll be murder unless I can stop it. Hey, you awake. Oh, hey. you mean Al Coronado. What's happened, Johnny? Plenty, and listen, that boy is more than punch drunk. He's had a brain injury of some kind, I'll bet on it. That's what I was afraid of. The tap on the face that knocked him out tonight wasn't enough to hurt a kitten. But a good solid blow would probably kill him. That's why he kept protecting his face. 
but Ricky Malone is making him keep on? Who else? I just met the gentleman, by the way. Well, what'd he say? Did you question him? Before I could, he cracked me over the head with a chair. Where is he now? Oh, I don't know. What are you going to do? See if the police can track them down. Malone said something about leaving town right away. Well, keep after him. Did you read that policy carefully? You kidding? I haven't had time. It's an annuity. That much I saw. Beginning in three or four years, it'll pay Al a nice little income for the rest of his life, if he survives. But the beneficiary named... Yes, Frankie Fortina, who gets the full face value of the policy if Al dies. Johnny. Yeah? I got a rundown on Fortina. You said he was a bookie at one time. That was the least of his crimes. He has a record as long as your arm. As I see it, he owns Al Coronado. Then you're probably thinking what I am. Al hasn't been doing so well lately. He's taken a big drop in class. Isn't making the purses he used to. You know that? Yes. The ANBA keeps a complete record. So with this injury to his brain, the only way Fortina can clean up on him is by seeing him dead. That's right. Well, what about medical examinations before these fights? Ricky Malone could bribe his own mother, especially in some of the towns where Al has been fighting lately. That's yeah, possible, of course. Also... What you and I believe is wrong with Al is one of the hardest things in the world to detect. Yeah, yeah, I must admit he looked great when he entered the ring. Okay, Paul, one thing's in our favor. Neither Al nor Ricky Malone knows who I am, outside of being a fight fan. Just so Fortina doesn't learn different. Where is Fortina, by the way? I don't know. So, Johnny, whatever you do, be careful. <laughs> Expense account item 9, 370 for a couple of phone calls, some breakfast, and a taxi to police headquarters. I'll say this for the Joplin police. When they go into action, they really get things done. Within less than two hours, Sergeant Danny Ruskin dug up all the information I wanted. Well, that ties in with what Conroy found out at the airport. No, that does it, Herm. Thanks very much. Something? Well, I think it gives us the whole story, Johnny. Al and his manager, Ricky Malone, checked out of their hotel, the Rayberry, at 1 o'clock this morning. Just the two of them? Right. There was no third party by the name of 14 or anything else, just the two of them. Uh, they caught the 140 plane for Oklahoma City, oh. and there they bought tickets routing them to Monterey, Mexico. Mexico? How soon can I get a plane? You're going down there, huh? I told you, I gotta save that guy's life. All right, look, in Monterey, look up Sergeant Romilia Garcia, Main Homicide Division. You mention my name, he'll give you anything you want. Good. Now, what about that plane? <laughs> on plane connections turned out to be bad. The best time I could make was by way of El Paso. That's item 10, $127, including incidentals. I finally pulled into Monterey shortly after 8 p.m. I parked my bag at the airport, taxied into town. Item 11, I went straight to main headquarters of the Policia. Sergeant Romilio Garcia was off duty. He'd gone to the fights. Item 12, $4 American for a fast taxi ride to the Plaza del Fisticuffs, or whatever they call it. There for item 13, five bucks, I had the sergeant paged over the PA system. After two or three minutes, a short, stocky, important-looking figure in police uniform stood up to the door. Senor Johnny Dollar? Yeah, that's right, Sergeant. How are you? You Americanos. Now, what is so important I must leave the excellent fights to talk with you, huh? The possible murder of an American fighter right here in your own ring. So what is that to be excited about? Something that happens all the time. It's because the Mexican fighter is more better than the Americano fighter. So if that is all it is bothering Incidentally, you... Sergeant Danny Ruskin of the Joplin Police... Sergeant Danny! Why do you not say so at the beginning? Well, you didn't give me much of a chance. <laughs> How is it, my good friend, Sergeant Danny? Boys, it's too long I have seen here. Yeah, well, look... Excellent man, Sergeant Danny. When I have trouble with one of our Mexican nationals who escape across the border and go all the way to Missouri, Joplin, it's Sergeant Danny who... But, but you have a problem, eh? Yeah. A fighter name of Al Coronado. Coronado... Oh, but of course, tomorrow night he is fighting here, and he will lose. Why do you say that? Come, look. Here on the, what do you call, uh, a billboard, a picture of the man he is to fight. So, El Toro Negro. That sounds more like the name of a bull than a... Holy... See, si, big man, is he not? Is this picture real? 240 pounds, senor. But Al Coronado only weighs in at 181. See. Si. El Toro, big man. In Senor Dollar, he is a killer. Our best. Three men he's knocked out of the ring. But nobody hurts him, so no wonder you worried. Sergeant, unless you and I can stop it, that won't be a fight tomorrow night. It'll be a premeditated, cold-blooded killing. Oh? How so? I showed Garcia my credentials. Then told him what I knew and what I suspected. 
until we have proof of this, senor. To start what you call a international situation, you are not now in your own country, you know. Still, he agreed to cooperate. First thing, of course, was to locate Al and his manager. In this city of nearly 200,000, that could be pretty rough. But he said he'd try. He drove me by the airport to pick up my bag, then to a hotel. And there, as the bellhop unlocked the door of my room, I got a real break. The next door down the hall opened. Hey, kid, uh, how'd you like to bring me up a glass of warm milk, huh? Al! Al Coronado! Huh? Oh, oh, hi! Here, boy, just put in my bags inside and leave the door open. Yeah, gracias, senor. Hey, Al, are you alone? Oh, sure. Hey, hey you're Johnny, ain't you? Yeah, that's right, Johnny, and I want to talk to you. I used to see you inside all the time up in Hartford, huh? You saw me in Joplin, too. Only you don't remember... Where's Ricky Malone, your manager? Oh, he said he had to go meet somebody. He's always going out. Look, Al, I'm an insurance investigator. Oh? Oh, I got some insurance. Yeah. One more fight and somebody's going to collect it. Oh, no, Johnny. That's my retiring money. The only one who'll retire on it is Frankie Fortina. Hey, Frankie, he's my owner. You know him? Hey. Who takes all the aspirin around here? Me. I get a lot of headaches all the time. Maybe that's why I ain't been hitting so good lately. Yeah. Here, catch this bottle. Hey, now... Ah, uh, now look what you did. No, no, Al. You look what you did. You missed that bottle by three inches. Uh, For the same reason you haven't been hitting well, why you have these headaches. All right, I'll give it to you straight. You've had a brain injury, Al. One good wallop on that head'll kill you. And that's just what Ricky and Fortina want. Ah, uh, no. Ricky always says they keep my head protected, so you must be wrong. Am I? Well, Ricky's good to me. Why, you numbskull, he's trying to get you killed. I, you, Johnny, you are wrong. You know the man you're up against tomorrow night? Well, I know his name. Well, he's the one scheduled to finish you off. Johnny, I, I don't believe that. Al, Al, listen, you gotta believe it. Now, where's the tell? Here. Uh, uh, who are you going to call? Hello, this is an emergency. Get me Sergeant Romilio Garcia at Central Police Headquarters. Uh, cops? That's right, Al, and a doctor. Uh, no, look, Ricky says to stay away from doctors. All they do All is All they can they... do is stop you from ever fighting again. And that would make you worth just $50,000 less to Frankie... For... Sergeant Johnny Dollar, I found Al. Hotel room right next to mine, room 915. Bring a doctor, a brain specialist if you can, even if you have to drag him out of bed. Oh, look, we'll fight the international situation when we come to it. You get a doctor up here, you hear me? Mr. You hang up or I'll blow your head off. Well, Mr. Fortina, I believe. Frisk him, Ricky. Sure, boys. He's clean. Huh? I hate to shoot an unarmed man, Dollar, but if you make one phony move... So you know who I am, huh? Well, Ricky here may be stupid in some ways, but he had sense enough to call me from Joplin after you broke in on him there. Finding out what you're up to wasn't difficult. Finding out what you're up to wasn't very tough either, Fortina. But it's all over. Not for me, Dollar. That's where you're wrong. That phone call I made was to the police. I know, to central headquarters. That's over three miles from here. By the time your sergeant finds a doctor and gets here, you'll be dead. And I will be gone. Have you forgotten that you have a border to cross, you Fortina? You think I'm stupid? Frankie Fortina has never been here. He's never been even in Mexico. Because my tourist card reads Charles Edward Smith. And since the next plane leaves for the States in about 20 minutes, Ricky... Yeah, boss? I think Mr. Dollar had better have an accident. Fall out of the window, perhaps. Oh, now, wait a minute, what? boss. I mean, whoop. Listen to me, Malone. I had two reasons for coming down here. To see if you were right about Dollar and to make sure of that fight tomorrow. You've been stalling with Al. You've taken too long. The heat is on up north. I need the dough. I told you, boss, that El Toro will hey, do listen, it tomorrow. Fellas, Shut up. Uh... And look, if you take care of Dollar, what about me? What? Maybe you can get back to the States, but me, with, with Dollar laying dead here, and, and if Al talks... Al and... won't talk. You won't either. Frankie. Dollar has given us a perfect setup. He came here to Al's room. You found him here. Hmm? You had a fight... Dollar ends up in the street below. But what happens to me? Haven't then? I always taken care of you in the past when you were working for me? You know what will happen if you ever try to cross. Me. No, no. All right, listen, all right, Frankie. all right. 
I have contacts down here. I have plenty of them. I have lawyers, good ones. It's going to be self-defense, pure and simple. But what if Al talks? I told you before, Ricky. You've taken too long with hey, him. Frankie, listen. While I hold this gun, you're going to take care of Al, too. The way you should have a long, long time ago in his Frankie, fights. I, I don't no, understand. No, no, listen to me, Frankie. You listen. I can't You've been do in it. this whole thing just as deep as I have. And deeper. Because you're the one who's kept Al fighting. You've paid off all those phony medicos. You set him up for this El Toro tomorrow night. <laughs> You'll do it, Ricky. No. Then I'll use the gun on all three of you. Frankie. You're out of your mind, Fortina. Am I? It'll still look like a fight between you and Ricky. Boss. Al just happened to get hit accidentally by the gun that will be found beside your body. Boss. Hmm? Boss, I'll do it. <laughs> You bet you will. I'll do anything you say if you just help me get out of it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Dollar is first. And, brother, if you think it's going to be easy... It's either the window or this gun, Dollar. So far as you're concerned, I don't care which. Go on, Ricky. Okay, Just remember, boss. your own life depends on it. You bet I... Yeah. Right. <laughs> Boy, dirty, will you? The window, Ricky. The window, I said... Remember, it's your own life, Ricky. All right, Fortina. So you have got a gun. Al. <laughs> uh, yeah, Johnny, I, I, I hit him. Uh... What on me? See, Senor Dollar, with one very fine, clean left hook. While Fortina was watching you and the uh, unfortunate Ricky. Yeah. You got here a little late, Garcia. You see, but uh, tell me, senor, what makes you think this Al Coronado has lost his punch? Expense account item 13, $100. Legal expense, mainly a deposition for a lawyer to take to court. Just now, Garcia got me out of having to stay in Monterey for a hearing. I will never know, but he did. As for Al Coronado, I suggest the company make some adjustment in his policy that'll permit paying his annuities immediately. And why not? The company should have investigated more thoroughly before issuing this policy anyway. And if it doesn't show a little heart, but I'm sure it will. Item 14, 224 50, hotel and incidentals and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, 491.20. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a fast trip to the West Coast to an impossible case involving an impossible man. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Heard in our cast were Harry Bartell, Herb Ellis, Victor Perrin, Jack Crucian, Les Tremaine, and Lawrence Dobkin. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Stay tuned for five minutes of CBS News to be followed over most of these same stations by the FBI in Peace and War. Dan Coverley speaking. Ha, ha, ha.